Why do musicians struggle with identity? That's what I'm going to talk about on this video. All right, what's going on? This is Quaman Fowler coming to you, the Texas tenor. And also my mission statement is where I like to uh, nourish the soul with music and the message. So this is something that I'm actually um, going to start uh, purposely um, doing when I do share my content. Well, this has been at the base and core of what I do just overall. And so the thing that I wanted to talk about is identity. And um, so let me give you a little bit of background behind um, this whole idea and the reason why I'm doing this post and what I'm doing right now in my life at this particular point in time. So first of all, when, when it comes to identity, it's something that you need to, uh, to know. You need to know who you are. You need to know who you are not. And so these are like basic principles, but I feel that they have been complicated um, for us as musicians because a lot of times we embrace our ability and talents that we have and we make that our identity. And as a result of that, we're confused. We end up being confused because we're put in a situation where we're always serving others, whether it be being a church musician or being a secular musician or independent contractor, work for hire, all of these terms that I'm throwing out there, um, I want you to get the context of what I'm saying. When you're put in a position where people are hiring you or pulling on you, wanting you to play for the Christmas events, wanting you to play for corporate events, wanting you to play for birthday parties, wanting you to teach their a child how to play, or they want you to uh, record with them on a new project. People are always pulling on us as musicians, especially when we're really talented. And so what happens a lot of times, you we get into this um, mode of just being the hired help. Uh, we get into this mode where we're always serving others, which is not a bad thing because music in terms from a biblical standpoint, it does operate under the gift of helps. So it does encourage people. It makes people feel good. It, it uh, prepares atmospheres. It, it is used everywhere. It's used in television, commercials. It's used in worship. It's used in celebrations. It's just one of those things. Music is a universal language. So as a musician, when we practice and study, um, it is it takes up a lot of mental real estate. And so a lot of times we're not, like when we first get into it, we're so captivated with the sounds. Uh, we're captivated with the techniques. We're captivated with the study and all of that. And a lot of times we don't think about basic things outside of music in, in order to help ourselves to function and carry um, what we are called to carry the, for the for the for you know overall in its entirety as just human beings away from the music and so that's a lot to say I, I I hope I made it all clear and put things in the front of your mind to really entice you because this is something that we struggle with as musicians because um and I imagine other people in other fields can can identify but one of the things you want to you want to do and this is one of the things like let's say back in 2015 it was really really pressing on me to do uh, my book the Christian musician let me grab it so so my book the Christian musician I released back in 2015 and so what I um, was was wanting to do or what was really pressing on my heart is to write this book and talk about what our real gift is OK, because coming up as a musician, especially if you're talented, you are always told that you have a gift. This is God's gift, like you're gifted 
to play music. You're gifted to do this. And people tell you, oh, you're good. You're genius if, you, if you're the, at that level. You know, people will really gas you up and make you feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. Now, <coughs> excuse me. So now it's not to say that that's not what you're supposed to do. I'm just saying it could be an aspect of what you're what you're called to do or an aspect of, you know, your talents. You know what I'm saying? And so let me let me let me say it like this. So what what ends up happening is a lot of musicians, they will submit themselves to the persona of a musician or they'll submit themselves to the identity of a musician. And a lot of times when you look at them outside of music, their function outside of music, they're struggling. They're struggling in life. They're struggling with the finances. They're struggling with business. You know what I'm saying? I promise you, everybody out there can hear what I'm saying and know what I'm talking about. You know, and, and especially when it comes to an, an economy or when you're uh, dealing with being a, um, uh, a independent contractor, you know, there's usually not any benefits tied to that. It's basically work for hire. So you go and you provide the service and then that's it. Whereas a person can get a, a job at a university or a certain job to where they have the benefits and, um, you know, the salary, the consistent paycheck every two two weeks or every month or whatever, depending on how your structure is set up when you have a job. Because that's a system and it's a structure that's set in place for people who work regular jobs like that. But for musicians, it's, like I say, it's, it's, it's gigs, it's sporadic, it's here and there, independent contract work. And so we ended up, we end up uh, ripping and running and doing all these gigs, especially if you want to make a, a, a substantial amount. You know, normally it requires for you as a musician to go on the road, to travel uh, hours and hours uh, overseas, you know, you might have fun playing over overseas and and um, and traveling and things like that. But it takes a toll on you if you have a family or it takes away time from uh, the quality time with your family. Yeah, it's work and it might be fun. You might get to play with the cats at a, at a certain level that you uh, always dreamed to do and all of that kind of stuff. But at the same time, it takes away from your own personal program and own personal goals that you um, it can when it comes to family. I'm not saying traveling is, you know, can't be a part of your goals and all of that. That's OK. I did trap a lot of traveling earlier on in my 20s, you know, traveling around uh, the world and uh, playing with different people at a high level and all of that. I did that. But let me tell you what I found is by the time I got 30 or actually 28 going into 30, I had identity issues because I had all of this acclaim as a uh, notable jazz saxophonist in the world. But uh, just things uh, internally were very conflicting. Like, And so the thing that, that's a little interesting about me, of course, I came up uh, in church. So I always was aware of God's word, what to do, what not to do. And of course, you know how it is when we are young, we get away from home and we'll explore and, and do certain things. But the thing that's interesting, uh, if you have the word inside of you, most times, some people just rebel and they just, you know, they have traumatic situations that really push them out there. And some, you know, don't return or don't want to return or feel like a have gone too far to return. But for me, I didn't go out like that. You know, I was uh, exposed to different things. And but at the same time, I was I was like, you know what? I don't want to go out there <laughs> like that. You know what I'm saying? You see certain people in their behavior and you see certain vices and things that um, your peers might have, colleagues or whatever, we, uh, musician peers and stuff like that. You see the struggles and the trauma that they're uh, how they're responding to their trauma and 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 getting into all of these different things, and you 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 think about man, I don't I don't feel that like um, I don't. It's not in me to really do all these different <laughs> activities that I'm seeing that's going on. I just wanted to play, 
you know, but you start seeing these struggles that musicians are having and it's it's quite common. And then you have to sit back and think like, man, why? Why 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 is this like this? And it's basically people are being used. Most of the time musicians are being used and they're used. A person is able to use and abuse you most of the time because you don't know your identity. You don't know who you are. You don't you haven't put parameters in place where, you know, oh, that's out of bounds. That's not who I am. That's not what I do. And I'm even talking about not even just talking about getting involved in to, uh, you know, uh, sex and, and drugs and, and all of that. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about clearly defining uh, who you are in terms of a man, a woman, a husband, a wife, a father, a mother. Like just from a human being standpoint and what God has created us to be and how he's designed us to function and the whole idea of having a family one day, even before you're even there, like as a child, you know, we're raised are supposed to be raised from a father and mother. And then we watch that model. And of course, when we get to that point, we're dating or courting. We look to have a wife. Like for me, I looked to, I wanted a wife when I was like, 18 because I was I was wilding and I was like no I don't want to I don't want to be like this you know and if you want to give details on all of that a lot of people like they like uh controversy or what you call it mess but if you want to get into it you can go to the Christian musician and this is my uh book where I kind of explain my life and talk about what that gift really is and so also I left a link that is in uh, this video where you can check out the audiobook. So if you have uh, Amazon Prime already, you can actually um, start, I think it's zero. Like you don't have to pay anything to get the audiobook. So they got a new special or something going on, especially during this time, Black, Black Friday or Thanksgiving weekend. You know, they always had those deals and stuff. But click that link that's in the description of this video and you can go check out the audiobook and listen to it. But check it out. Here it is. So I was just saying, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, a lot of times you like for me, when I was when I was uh, at when I was 18, I saw patterns and stuff that that I was just going with the flow, you know, following my fleshly desires and stuff like that. And I was like, man, wait a minute. I, this is not what I feel that God has for me. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to be one way. um, uh, on the outside or in front of people and in a different person behind closed doors. Another thing that is very important too, uh, when you have a call on your life, God will give you, uh, he'll, he'll convict you. He'll, uh, you'll feel those, um, what do you call it? You'll feel those, those, those pullings where, where you feel like, nah, I can't do that. Like I was turning down certain gigs with certain people in college when other friends and other peers were doing stuff. Like I was not doing stuff that I knew I didn't need to do, although I kind of wanted to do, but I had to not take those things because God had a different plan and a course for my life. And um, that can be um, something that plays with your head. Uh, but at the same time, you you have to differentiate between what, you want to do or explore and what God has for you. But your confidence is going to come from having a relationship with God and hearing from him when he speaks to you, then you can just do what he says do. And then it will create the peace. It'll create a, a, a more paved path for you than just going out there trying stuff only to realize that you got a void in your life. And that's what I've seen most of the time with a lot of musicians. They'll travel the world, and I've talked to them. They travel the world, did all this stuff, and just still feel unfulfilled. They feel like, you know, this is not it. I even met different musicians over time. And, um, you know, I'm married, have uh, a son and daughter. And, you know, we talk and catch up, and they're still – I'm talking about different musicians who I've met who've – 
who uh, who I've seen that I've known like back in the day, they're still single, that are still single. And then when you talk to them about you having a family and everything, they's like, dang, you know, they, they're they feeling like, man, I wish I would have had that or could have had that. But that's what I'm saying. Music, music is so consuming and it's such um, a hustle sometimes just to keep the bills paid and you forget about just a normal, uh, what they call it, civilian life. And but the thing about it is you you have to start with the end in mind. So when you clearly defined who you are, like I said, man, so I'm going to speak about myself, man, one day I wanted to be uh, married. And I actually wrote these things down back in the day and put them on my um, in my room uh, on the wall. And so I was really big about writing down what I wanted to accomplish. So. And I talk about in the book, too, how when I won the Thelonious Monk competition back, uh, well, the third place in it back in 2008, when I was inspired to do that, it was back in two, uh, no, 1995 when I saw that Joshua Redman had won that. And so I was really uh, big on writing down what I wanted to accomplish and making sure I did it. So I would pray, I would practice, and uh, I was just diligent with, with um we're going after the things that I desired. I identified what I wanted to do, and I went out and I accomplished it. When I practiced on the saxophone, I would practice with the fervency of I want to be one with the horn. So I had that type of urgency. The first day when I started playing saxophone back in middle school, they only taught us one note in the class. And at the end of the class, I went to the teacher. I was like, what's the rest of the notes? He's like, this is just the first day. You're going to get those, you know, throughout the week. And I was like, no, nah, that's not good enough. I wanted to know how to play every note on the saxophone. So I went home and practiced, and I learned how to play every note on the saxophone. So I had that type of urgency, fervency for uh, getting what I want, <clears throat> you know, out of um, the saxophone and even music. When I heard music that was challenging or that was cool, I would learn it. And the stuff that was challenging, I would learn it. And so I did that because I wanted what I heard. I wanted to be able to play those things that that I heard. And so little did I know and understand that that was not just a musical ability. That's just an ability. That's just how I'm wired. And so um, that's the thing that I had to learn later. So um, the things that kind of inspired me to write the book the christian musician learn what your real gift is and how to succeed with and beyond your music so the key is in 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 the book i i've set it up and explain it how um i realized that my gift was not my <clears throat> sorry my gift was not my musical ability my gift is the way i think the music is just an avenue by which my giftedness is displayed through. You got it? So who I am away from the instrument is still going to benefit my wife. It's going to benefit my children. It's going to benefit those who hear me teach. You know, in addition to hearing me play, because it's the same source. And so... Out of knowing who you are away from music, it will give you um, confidence, self-esteem. And my my confidence, self-esteem came from having a relationship with God. But even before that, it was having a relationship with my father and my mom. They poured in me the foundation. They gave me the example I watched them. My my, my dad passed away at tw at uh, 2012, so I was uh, 32, um, and my mom is still alive. Um, yeah, so so, but I'm just giving you some some context. Context. Sometimes we we what they say we miss seeing the forest because of the trees. So we're so uh, tied up into superficial things. And we're tied up into an artificial world or arbitrary um, definitions or labels 
that we submit to and then we get lost from knowing like, yo, this stuff is not created by God. This is man-made stuff. The industry, the labels, the the genre, the style, all of that is is for purposes for um for making money. You know what I'm saying? This is an industry. So you you can't take a, on that identity alone because yes, it's going to be harmful. That's why so many cats have drinking drinking problems or drug addictions and you know just mess mess over all these different uh daughters and stuff like that you know what i'm saying i say daughters because you want to keep things in the context you can't be selfish and serve yourself and going and messing over uh daughters and people's futures wives because that stuff they have to carry on in their relationships so i had understanding of that because of my biblical perspective my biblical world view coming up and going out in the world and seeing what was going on out there i was like golly man i can't go that far it's like but that's an identity thing the god will he because he gives us free will you you can do what you want that doesn't mean that the end of (laughs) where you're going is going to be the right place or destination and so i felt like i came to the end of myself when even i was at the top so when i was performing traveling playing around the world playing gigs being recognized as being one of the you know best jazz saxophone players or whatever, um, that was the most struggle uh, that I had because I was when I finished my master's degree and I came home. Me and my wife came back to uh, the area here in Fort Worth and we we uh, moved into a duplex and then like uh, was it even a month or a couple of weeks? Somebody broke in and they stole my saxophones. They stole her computer and everything. It was a really low point. <clears throat> I was trying to look into buying a house, and I couldn't because my stuff was all over the place. When you're a musician, you don't have no consistent income. It's sporadic. So they can't use your <laughs> pay stubs and stuff like that, or uh, W-2. You know, it's it's just all over the place. So we had to wait. We had to continue to rent. And we got broken in. They stole my stuff. And so I was like, God, I'm trying to do you. I'm trying to live for you. I don't, you know, I'm trying to take care of my my family, my wife. Of course, I didn't, wasn't, uh, I didn't have any kids at the time. So I was like, man, I needed some direction. So one of the things I did, I prayed because, um, you know, the Bible say, if uh, any man lack wisdom, let him ask a God. So I was like, Lord, I need your wisdom. And so. Lo and behold, right after that, like a week ago, my wife's uncle, uh, Will Ford, who's a phenomenal historian, Christian uh, historian and uh, evangelist. He uh, at the time he was telling me about um, uh, Pastor G starting uh, the church. And so uh, at the time, I was like, you know, that's where I need to go. So I went and hooked up with him. And in that season, he just helped me to learn that. uh Good stuff, Q. Okay, cool. All righty. Excellent. So I'm just looking at the comments. But anyway, he he helped my pastor. Now, back then, he was just helping me to understand that, um, you know, some stuff you need to get from another man, you know. Uh, and I, I was pretty imbalanced because I was so uh, strong and adamant about music, and I was – adamant about my faith I had locks at the time but I needed that mentorship I needed somebody who had experience balancing music and faith and um and different things and business and finance and all of that because there's a there's a whole plate (laughs) there's a lot of stuff we got to carry and it's not just uh making your music sound good you know what I'm saying that's it's more than that like and so I was practicing. I would practice six six hours a day and stuff like that. And I was just in a habit of just doing it just since I was in high school. And so once you get married and once you um once you you know, you you decide not you want to have kids or you want to pay bills, <laughs> get a mortgage or buy a house or whatever, then you gotta change some stuff. So this is kind of part of the story. I ended up uh starting 
Jazz Webster because I was like, I need to get paid for for practicing. So that's kind of the history of of how I inspired. I was inspired to start that. And plus, I saw a lot of musicians were getting divorces. You know, people who I admired that had families, musicians that were really good and traveling, had families. There, they a lot of them uh, divorced. And I was like, no, nah, that's not what's up. You know, I don't, I don't want that. So. I had to make a decision and I stopped uh, going on the road and then I started creating a lot of videos and putting them up on YouTube and stuff like that. And I created a membership site, Jazz Web Shed. Now it's a uh, Texas Turner Academy. So I got into that because I wanted to make money here at the house. So we're still talking about identity, right? So a part of our identity, what I was saying is you look to other men. I'm a man, so I'm, I'm talking to men out there. So uh, you look to other men. So I might be a gateway, right? I might inspire you and give you a model as far as um, what I did to monetize my music and to get my message out. I'm using social media. I'm um, putting out, you know, have a membership site, have CDs I put out and all that kind of stuff. That's like a gateway. And when I say a gateway, it's basically inspiring you so you can look deeper and get into what you need to do, your identity. Are you married? You know, are you um, a a father? You know what I'm saying? Are you taking care of them? You know what I'm saying? So it's something that's going to challenge you when you have somebody else who can be a mentor and like, like challenge you on those, those areas and help you balance things, then it's really helpful. And so a lot of stuff, God, you can get from the word, you can get from your personal study and prayer, but at the same time, God will use people to help people. So he'll use people, he'll use social media, he'll use a YouTube, a person or whatever, and they'll kind of nudge you, say, hey, you know, you need to be thinking about this stuff. You you don't need to just be out there roaming. <laughs> you need to, to, to settle down and, and get serious so you can take care of your, your family or have a wife one day, take care of some kids, start saving money, start, um, you know, looking into uh, creating some other products and services outside of just playing gigs. So anyway, I was kind of just just trying different things with the Internet. I was uh, playing gigs. I was not playing certain gigs because I didn't want to do the top 40 thing. And I didn't want to play certain songs because as a Christian, I wanted to represent things right and I do a lot of original music so I'm piecing stuff together and so uh through the mentorship through my my pastor and even um you know other people who are outside of um music and so I always talk about I always um for those people who talk to me I'm always sharing audiobooks and uh different things that I'm reading and listening to podcasts so that had a, a big deal of, um, you know, building me up in terms of understanding things from a business standpoint and financial standpoint, because everybody doesn't have everything in terms of people who you are and who you may admire. So, for instance, I use this example also in the the book, um, like listening to different um, musicians. I liked uh, uh, John Coltrane. I like uh, Sonny Rollins. I like Cannibal Adderley. These are all, you know, uh, notable jazz saxophonists. And they all have different things that they really do well, you know, characteristics. But even to take it a step further, you're admiring them for their playing ability. You don't know what their personal lives was like. A lot of them, sadly to say, not, you know, necessarily them, but a lot of uh, the people who we admired uh, musically struggled with drug addictions. But my thing is, and what I'm saying even in this talk, it has everything to do with identity. You know what I'm saying? We are now in 2023. We got so much information that that is really quick at our disposal. We can find everything, uh, you know, by Googling and doing AI, chat, GPT and all that kind of stuff. So our knowledge is very much so uh, we can, you know, we have made aware of a lot of stuff that previous generations might not have been aware of. So, yeah, we, we understand that. But my thing here now is to make sure you, you, you take advantage of what you have right now in terms of that will aid in you to better present who you are 
uh, outside of just playing a gig. Your value is is higher than that. And I even heard something recent recently. You got more to offer than just your playing ability. That's what I'm saying. And so here even recently I heard something that was phenomenal. So this whole identity thing is still unfolding for me. You know what I'm saying? So one of the highlights I heard, it was Myron Golden. This was powerful. He was breaking down. This was a video on how to go from a million a year to a million a month. And so he was saying it's easier to do it. But he was saying uh, it's all about communication. And this is part of the reason why I'm doing this talk, because it really hit home. And what he said is a value is is created by the message you carry and the faith it creates. You see, one more time, value is created by the message you carry and the faith it creates. All right. And so when I heard that, I was like, wow. And this really connects with even what my pastor told me years back. He said, Quaman, you make money with your mind, not with your music. And that messed me up. That like God was just showing me, just nudging me, just just touching me a little bit. It's like, yeah, you know, that's all good. You can play real good. Yeah, that's fine. You're applying all these principles and and discipline to playing. That's that's good. You're putting out albums, you're 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 publishing stuff, you know, that's that's fine. But let me tilt you a little bit this way. Let me show you. It goes a little deeper, right? It goes a little deeper. And so, but Myron was talking about how um, it's a cap on certain uh, jobs, you know, work for hire. You can only make so much, uh, like he said, hammering a nail. You can, and, and so for the people who manage people who ham, hammer nails, you know, they, they make a little more than the folk who do the work. That's a manager. You go from an employee to a manager and then the visionary, which is the CEO, they're making all kind of money and they're making money with their ideas. They're making money with their vision and they're having their uh, managers to implement the vision that they have and put a time frame on it because they got to manage the workers and make sure they do the job in a certain uh, uh, time, a certain time, you know. And so just understanding how things work, like, and not getting so caught up in being a great technician. Not saying it's bad, but it, that's like the first step. You know, we have to graduate and understand that music, our music ability is like one asset. You know what I'm saying? It's an asset, <clears throat> but it's not the only asset. When the pandemic happened, a lot of cats were really struggling because they couldn't play gigs. A lot of cats didn't know what they were going to do. They had identity crisis because I got to make it happen. I got to pay bills. Bills don't stop. They don't care about no pandemic. The lights, the Internet, you know, those bills have to be paid. That's residual. And so that's the thing, too. At an earlier age, in my 20s, I learned about, you know, you need to have residual income. And so I've been doing a, doing a lot of this stuff with uh, investing, you know, really in my 20s. And I got did real estate. I did uh, crypto investing, trading, still do a, a lot of that here uh, today. But I'm looking over uh, the course of my life and kind of explaining this now. And like I say, it's, it's always evolving or uh, unfolding. You get more insight the more that you um, hear things. You know, it's like certain messages from certain people who are far farther along. They help you to even um, better package up or do things to better package up what you do. So it's almost like you have to keep reinventing yourself. You know, you might have did some particular thing, like, for instance, like people who, who, are, who are athletes, their identity is wrapped up in their ability. But as soon as they hit, you know, mid 30s to going into 40s, they have to change their identity. You know, they have to do something different. A lot of people, a lot of those guys end up investing, um, you know, getting philanthropy or become a coach or they pour into the next generation. But here's the deal. Here's the here's the deal. <clears throat> they use their mind. They use their uh, skill 
and the way they think and they transfer it into other people, into young people. That's where the value is. And so I was like, the more and more I understand or am understanding this, that's a very powerful um, place and a valuable place to be functioning functioning in. Playing gigs is is cool, it's great. Uh, but what I'm seeing is the most value that I'm gonna be able to give and even create is through igniting the faith in you. If you don't have it or if you don't understand, I can talk and and talk from my experience because I have experience and accomplishments in jazz music and and put out albums and stuff like that that's like credibility to know that the the mindset that i had and the discipline that i applied in those areas will qualify me to be able to speak to you about being successful or give you insight on how you can organize things in your own life so that you can uh, get similar results or basically fine tune where you are in your development as a man, uh, a a woman. If it's women out there, I'm not trying to be, you know, exclude you, but I'm just, you know, speaking most, most of my audience is men, you know, I look at the analytics, but anyway, uh, but yeah, it's all about being solid with your identity as a man, a woman, a husband, a wife, and then, uh, a mother, a father, and a mother. Because that's very important because what will happen is you'll be spinning your wheels, doing all this stuff, having fun, traveling the world, playing, getting notoriety and all of that, and you don't really have a legacy besides the the audible stuff or besides what you've created or contributed to the world sonically. You know what I'm saying? And that can influence pe- people, but at the same time, when you're playing for people, when we're playing for people, we're playing for families. We're, pl- we're playing for people who are hurt. We're playing for people who've been through traumatic experiences. We're playing for people who've lost loved ones. We're encouraging their heart. So there's a, that's a piece. Music, playing music is a piece of it. But really who you are as a person, you need to be whole. You need to know who you are and what you are called to do. If I don't play saxophone anymore, my wife is going to love me. My son is going to love me. My my daughter is going to love me. My mom. People love me for who I am. God loves me for who I am and who he's created me to be. The, 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 The music is what I wanted. I got fascinated with that. And so I do it, and I do it well. I hear stuff, and I'm able to communicate what I hear. And that's a discipline in itself. But God will use these things metaphorically and then teach a bigger uh, goal or a bigger call. Uh, Because when we're young, we're, we're immature, and we get fascinated with things that have been designed by our, the world or, or, or certain industries and stuff, we want to act. We want to play. You know what I'm saying? We want to do these things. But really, you can't forget about God's program. That's the thing because what will happen is you get so wrapped up in the artificial thing or the superficial things, and then you feel empty inside because you're fulfilling man's desires, even your own. You're fulfilling your own desires, but really – You haven't taken time to hear God, understand what he wants, and walk it out because you hustled. You so much in the hustle. You so much in the grind. And then years are getting away from you, and you're not married. Or you've been married and divorced, you know, because of your your schedule, your focus, your priorities are off. Or even if you have a family, you can't take care of them because you're not making enough money because it's not enough gigs or, you know what I'm saying? It's like all of these things are just stacking up on top of each other and it's going against you. But the underlining issue is your identity. You don't know really who you are and, and you never stop to take the time to lay it out. And a lot of this is coming from my class that I've been teaching. I teach a music business class and one of the things that I talk about is a brand like what's your brand what's your mission statement and we do 
um, we did an exercise where I have questions. I ask them questions and have them to answer those questions. And from that, uh, we'll pull in what is what should be your 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 mission statement and what should be the keywords and all that. Because even just from a the way we function today with uh, social media, everything is about the the hashtag and the the keywords. That's how people will be able to find you, to find. Um, you know, in terms of uh, what explains what you do, you know, the emotions that are tied to what you do or that's ignited in people who who uh, who who hear you or, you know what I'm saying? So all of that has to be clearly defined, you know what I'm saying? So it's a lot to this identity thing, and I'm seeing that it continues to unfold and develop. So with that said, I want to invite you, uh, first and foremost, I put a link in the description of this video. But I'm telling y'all, it's going to get real from this point moving forward for me. And uh, I'm going to share more about this topic. And you can get my book to start with uh, at the link that is on this page, The Christian Musician. Uh, <clears throat> just go there. Uh, you, you can get it on Amazon or you click that link. There's a, That's a link that'll take you to where you can listen to it on Audible. And I also put my number there. That number is 972-232-7185. And you can text um, book to that number. And that's a way that you can get on my e on my text blast link. And I'm not texting a bunch, but when I'm doing something or when I create something that is pertaining to this area, I can let you know uh, what's going on. Because like identity is like an ongoing uh, thing in terms of understanding because I was telling one one of my uh, friends today uh, another trumpet player producer we were talking on the phone and um, I was just telling him the thing about um, you know when you're in business and when you're learning new stuff you have to implement what you learn and so sometimes you have these epiphany moments where you just didn't have that perspective uh, a year ago. So you might have been inspired to do a certain thing a certain way, you know, but then as you mature and the more information you get, then you got to clean up your house. You got to clean up your your online house or your digital, you know, homes, you know what I'm saying? And even your your message and your products and services. It's like you you have to continue, continually tweak and, and, and um, implement uh, with the new perspective that you have. And that's a challenge. And, um, but anyway, we were talking about that, but I'm excited. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. And, um, hopefully this was helpful. I'm looking at some of the comments over here. Let me see if I have anything. Uh, Francesco said pure wisdom. It also, uh, applies to other activities. Yep. Uh, myself a lawyer oh wow he's a lawyer and your words are fully applicable that's right thanks and keep it keep it going my friend as always well I appreciate it you never know who's watching and um, this is the real essence of artistry that's right Headlines of new Oh, a, a breeze, a breeze of new of, of new air that completely sets you apart from those robots <laughs> that play with uh, pure virtuosity versus soul. Man, that's really good. That's right. And artistry. Yeah. Your speech is inspiring. That's powerful, man. And that's what it's about. I mean, I've seen that. Coming up, I saw cats who were virtuosos on the saxophone. I, I've seen, you know, departments, schools of music who would, you know, pump out these machines. <laughs> they were great readers. You know, they could play, but they didn't have no identity, you know. And uh, I made it a point to uh, be true to, to, first of all, be true to God and be true to people. I'm not, I don't do fake well, you know, even with teaching. Like, I like to tell people the truth. I like to give people the truth. But when you're in an academic setting, a lot of times they want you to not deal with certain topics or a lot of times the controversy is the people who are teaching 
are really not qualified because they don't have no real experience. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's a lot. We talk about cultural. We talk about spiritual. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's only so much you're going to get in a um, university setting. You know what I'm saying? Because that's their environment. And I'm not putting it down because I teach at a university. But I always, you know, wanted to be real and true and um, and share the real. And that's I think that's what people connect with, with my music, the spirit of my music, and uh, what I stand for. So that's, that's all for this talk. And uh, thank y'all for listening. Thank you all for sub- subscribing. Leave a comment, and if you want to show some love and send a virtual tip, tip you can go to kwamonfowler.com forward slash pay, or you can, um, you know, do a super chat here on YouTube or whatever. Make sure also that you um, send me a text message to get on my list. Just text um, uh, text book to that number. And uh, I'll be able to follow up with you for uh, things that I'm going to do and create around this area and topic. This is all kind of unfolding, but I want to do more talks addressing these issues and even uh, well, this area and even take um, here's some experiences from you and kind of help you with your uh, unraveling this thing. If you are uh, a mission, a musician that's struggling with identity. But first step is to get the book, uh, The Christian Musician, Learn What Your Real Gift Is and How to Succeed with and Be On Your Music. And I am working on a follow-up of The Entrepreneurial Musician, or I might change the title because that's, you know, I'm I'm taking uh, from the curriculum I created for my music business class. So, um, but I'll keep you up to date on that as it unfolds. But uh, for now, that's all I have for you. We were able to be on here a good 52 minutes, so under an hour. So uh, if there's no comments or questions, then uh, I will end this stream. So thank y'all so much for listening, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.